Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Red Dragon. Today I'm following Chunt and Chunt's operating Commonwealth deck on Nuclear Winter is Coming. It's a map that I don't feature that often because I just don't get that many replays with it. Now he said that early on, so about one minute in, he's going to have one of his allies leave. That turns this thing into a 3v4. Now a 3v4 on this map is not easy. Sure, you have basically three battle zones. I'd say Foxtrot, Delta, and the area between Charlie and Alpha. So it is manageable with three people, but ideally you'd want to be focusing on the areas that you're actually going to be pushing through with two players. So you'd have one player guarding Delta, one player defending Charlie Alpha, and for example two players pushing from Charlie to India, or from Fox to India. Probably not the most ideal example of what you could do, but that's how I would ideally go for a push. You have a, uh, as the Germans would call it, a Schwerpunkt, also known as a, well, I suppose you could call it a spearhead, or um, a center point of your attack. Now he's using a Commonwealth deck, so let's see what he deploys. A couple of Bisons, Infantry, Wolverines, um, Aslavs, oh nice, the Vicar Mark 11. One Challenger 2, a Smoke Grenade, or... Well, I think he's going to be using it as a smoke provider, the FV-432. And a Centurion Marksman. What is allies deploying? Kiowa, oh, oh. Kiowa's landed. It's not a good sign. Generally, if you spawn in a helicopter, you do it over a tree line or a building to make sure that it's already airborne. If you don't, then you have to go through the takeoff animation. Now we have Stats Looter over here. Um, who's using an 121? Actually, two of them. And you got the M1A1s moving forward. So not really a super heavy in that area. More like two high-end heavies. Because while the M1A1 does come with a very good gun, 19 AP and 17 frontal armor, it just does not stand up against those heavy Russian guns. Now, Chunt is what I usually call the lead player, which means that if somebody leaves either disconnects, disconnects uh, because he uh, quits, whatever it is, he gets the units. So Chunt might have to deal with more units than he's actually looking for. He's also rushing in with a couple of gazelles, a sorry, not gazelles, Lynx AH1. I wouldn't be surprised if there are SAS in here. And he's not the only one rushing for an early position in Alpha. We also have a Gazella over here. Tomcat nails it. So for the moment, there's no real helicopter threat, but that could have gone very, very different if that Tomcat hadn't actually intervened. Now, let's see how the left is doing. LK, LV KV 90 ready on the front line, but it's almost outrunning the main tanks. And while I really like the SRV-103 Delta, it does come with one significant drawback. It does not have a stabilizer. Now, for some reason, Statsluder is just rushing his forces directly into the Padobranchi, which are taking so much fire that they're immediately being wiped out. That boom bar, however, can still pose very much of a problem, especially to his STRV-121s. And I think he might have already lost one. A triple stack of v whores appears. Uh, that's a double stack at the moment, and you can see that he just keeps rushing his tanks in, loses the STRV-101, or 121, and the 103 might... Yeah, he just got another kill. If he can kill this tank, and I doubt it, actually. Oh, that could have been three kills on... Uh, or that could have been three super heavies killed early on. Now it is Conquest, and Red initially got a little bit more in the sense of Conquest areas than Blue. So Red's already sitting at a comfortable 51 points, where Blue is not. And I suppose you could say, unsurprising, Stats Looter, after having all of his units gotten murdered up here, just surrenders. He leaves the game. So that now leaves Chunt with the allies Azad01 and Fresh Meat to be controlling all the forces over here. And you can see that he did inherit a command vehicle and he did inherit the LVKV-90 that's still moving forward. Fortunately, the area here is being held at the moment by Azad. 
But the fact that Azad's using triple stack, or sorry, quad stacks even on quite a few units and keeping his AA active is not really very inspiring. Now it looks like Red is making a move here. We got V-Horse coming down, T-80Us, Tunguska's a whole bunch of transports. And what he has over here is 19 SAS and one Challenger 2 backed up with a bunch of Canadian Airborne. That's going to be quite a bit of work for the units that are currently defending this area, considering how much is coming this way. He tries to move the Challenger 2 forward. If there is any sort of high-end anti-tank infantry in here, VDV-90 for example, then you can kiss your Challenger goodbye. It's already taken quite a bit of fire. So far these things have a lot of armor, so they can sustain quite a few hits. But these guys do 24 AP versus 23 armor. Meaning that they don't really do too much damage, but if you got 40 of them coming at you, that's a whole different story. Canadian Airborne, in the meanwhile, are working over the Vihor. Vihor, I can't quite find their stats at the moment. 20 AP, and they're also dealing with an Afghanski. Now, the Afghanski seems to be going after the Bison. The Challenger 2 survived. More Lynxes are coming in. There was a Tunguska or two moving through here. So you might want to be careful with those Lynxes. The T-80U boot moves back. Currently, the whole area is being blinded by smoke. But that works both ways. That might allow these Lynxes to do a little bit more damage. That is definitely the Tunguska going active. If these guys can get some more rocket pods in, then that would be very helpful just to delay all the infantry that's coming down this way. The VDV have been reduced to just 20 now, but you can see it's still a quad stack. Canadian Airborne are holding on surprisingly well. They have done a very good job holding down this forest, considering everything that was coming down at them. And so far, I think that between the two of them, they might win this. But you can see that it is likely not going to be the end of it, as more smoke is coming in, and that more likely means more infantry is coming in as well. These Canadian Airborne are trying to fend off as much as possible. But unsurprisingly, they're panicked at this point. And uh, I can really not blame them after what they've been put through. Canadian Airborne over here, 14 guys left, all panicked. But the same goes for the VDV, the Motostrelki and the Conquerors. So they will win this, but they're going to need immediate reinforcements after that. Unfortunately, there are some more units coming in. FE-432, uh, more of them, Vickers Mark 11 and the AS-11. The mortar is still standing by to provide smor uh, smoke or additional fire support in the sense of HE. And over on the right flank, it seems that he lost a couple of units. He does have one group of Fusiliers left. And he is facing off against Proletary 90. This is where the transports could come in for good use. So far he's not going for it. A car who rushes in, no doubt trying to get a couple of hits on the... Uh, what I think is a double stack of V-Horse that I saw moving around. Yeah, and this is potentially the end of the Canadian Airborne. More VDV coming in, more Scrajets, so that's another 20 VDV more likely. Yeah, this is not going to go well. There's the additional VDV stacks. This is going to be a real problem. If the Canadian Airborne are wiped out, then he only has Javelins over here and whatever comes out of those 432s. The Challenger 2 fortunately has been repaired and is ready for another fight. But the question is, is that the ideal unit for a forest battle? And I'd say it is really not. You don't really want your Challenger 2 to be leading a fight in a forest. You can see he's not going for that. He's moving it off to the side, trying to get shots in on those tanks which are currently moving across the plains. But Red's not making it easy. They keep putting up more and more smoke. And because of that, despite the fact that the Challenger has a really good gun, it just can't use it. Because of all the smoke, it has no line of sight. Now the Fusiliers seem to have their targets picked out. They n uh, simultaneously nail both of those transports, making their life quite a bit easier. 432 on the offensive, and there's the double Vihor. This is something that the Fusiliers should be able to win. Especially since they're getting backup. 
Unfortunately, the V-Hors are not waiting around for that to happen. And they do a lot of damage, killing off one of the Fusilier squads. So far, they haven't actually been damaged. The Challenger is trying to help out, but again, can probably not see the target. More Modestrelki are coming in. Yeah, you need a good bombing run on this part. Challenger wipes out a BMP-1D. That's the end of a grenade launcher. But there is a whole bunch of infantry coming up behind that one grenade launcher. Look at this. These guys don't stand a chance. Blue 4 is just really, really outnumbered by red here. Now I'm going to quickly switch over to the middle area. Because this area is not the only one that's currently being fought over heavily, I might add. We've got Martyr 1A3s, Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, of course, some aerial strikes. Oh god, that's gonna hurt. They're coming in as well. Uh, currently barbecuing about 40, well, what was 40 Panzer Grenadier. I'm a little surprised that a captain, so that's a captain rank, or a ranked player, is using quad stacks here. Maybe he was going to split these up. I'm um, not exactly sure what happens there. But so far it seems that this town is a little bit more secure than the area over here. Where... Hold on, did this Challenger... Yeah, I think this Challenger went down. And I can't really blame him considering all the infantry that's coming after it. There is one good thing though, he still has the town. The question is, how long is that going to stay that way? Because there's a fuck ton of infantry in here, and not enough infantry in that town. For the moment, these guys have a little bit of cover. And we have a Vickers Mark 11. A potentially also the mortar could be used to defend the area. But aside from that, you don't really have too much anti-infantry weapons. More Bisons are rushing in. That's more Canadian Airborne. If these guys could capture the building before Red manages to, that would be very helpful. But Red's not just pushing this town, they're also looking for another town, right over here. Being held currently by 20 Fusiliers. Uh, and what's left of the initial 20 Canadian Airborne. Couple of Motostrelki. Fortunately, these guys are not interested in taking the building. So the Canadian Airborne are. And where's the T-80U? Because I know it's out there somewhere. In the meanwhile, and I haven't really been covering that too much, Red does have a plus two. And with that plus two, they're already at 109 points. Now sure enough, Blue still has plenty of time left to actually fix that. But it doesn't really look like they're doing too well. Here's another massed infantry attack. Jesus, this is a clusterfuck and a half. He's pushing in with about 160 guys, but he's not using any sort of combined arms. Or all of the combined arms just die. There's no transports, no infantry finding vehicles, no tanks, no AA, nothing. So you're just sending the infantry out here to die. And that's exactly what they're doing at an incredible speed. Look at how quickly the riflemen went down there. There was 160 guys back here a moment ago. Now there's 16, 10, 9, 7, and he barely made any progress. Now the transports are coming up, but now is way too late. All the infantry here got murdered by the combined firepower from the transports, the infantry, and some heavier fire support vehicles that they had. So that's really not an example of how to take a town. How to hold a town? Well, that's a whole different matter. Because for the moment, he has some infantry in here, but it is... Well, it's basically what's left of his defensive force. Fortunately, fresh meat is, well, providing some fresh meat in the form of 30 Panzer Grenadier, as well as a whole bunch of Leopard 1A5s. And these guys are now sitting ducks. Their transports are being blown up around them. That's not going to be too much of an inspiration to the infantry that's out there. And if these leopards can keep that up, then the defense of this town is going to stay, or, well, it's going to be more likely to actually be defended. Panzer Grenadiers and what's left of the Fusiliers are moving up, because they got Proletary 90 about to pay them a very unfriendly visit in this town. New Challenger 2 comes up. Unfortunately, again, the Challenger 2, while it is a good tank, 
it's in the current operating environment, I'd say not really the right unit to use. You don't need this massive gun operating over here because at the moment it's not going to be operating at the maximum range. And while that means that it might be able to one-shot more targets or heavier targets than it normally would, it's also causing the Challenger 2 to be at more risk. So in this area where I'd say the distance is about maybe a thousand, maybe 1200, I would be using cheaper tanks, Leopard C2 Maxis, stuff like that. Because you're just dealing with a whole bunch of infantry. And the infantry, as well as their transports, those currently are the biggest threat. Not really any sort of a super heavy. So if I can get a 3 HE gun for 80 points, then I'd much prefer that over a 3, or actually 4 HE gun for 170 points. Now he's using Commonwealth General, and with all the infantry that's coming down this way, and he's not quite done, there's more. I think that something along the lines of the uh, CEV, or as the British call it, the Aviary, would be a very, very handy unit to have in a terrain like this. It does a lot of HE damage. It range is only a thousand, but that's just about what you need in these ranges. These sort of encounters generally don't need more than a thousand meters range. So in the meanwhile, the Panzer Grenadiers are holding off whatever is coming at this town, but it is coming at a price. The Vickers Mark 11 moves around, hopefully trying to get some shots on the transports, or on... no, the Mod they're going for the Modus Trelki. He does take a hit. One more hit and the Vickers out of action. There we go. That was the Vickers. And now they're actually inside the town. The Panzer Grenadiers are falling. Spatsnaz Gru's coming in. What's left of a whole bunch of Modus Trelki. And there's even a uh, fresh squad of 20 Modus Trelki coming in. There is another group of Canadian Airborne. And it is more desperation than tactics at this point. He just keeps throwing infantry at the town. And that's exactly what uh, Weiss 99 is doing as well. Panzer Grenadiers, fortunately, are just dealing with Modus Trelki. I don't actually see any real Spatsnaz yet, just the Spatsnaz grew and the Modus Trelki. If Red Force starts throwing actual Spatsnaz at him, then his infantry is going to go down even faster. But for the moment, they seem to be holding off at what seems to be incredible cost to Red Force. Of course, he's not quite coming out of this battle unharmed either. He's losing a lot of... Oh, this is bold. A lot of infantry. And I really hope that he's going to be holding... Or that he's going to have uh, fewer infantry casualties than red. And at the moment, I think that's the case. But I'm not 100%. More bisons are rushing in, so more Canadian Airborne are on the way. Hopefully he can switch these guys out and keep them alive. And these guys don't seem to be stopping in the town, they're going directly for the forest. And with it, they might be able to intercept more infantry and their accompanying transports as they are inside these tree lines. Unfortunately, the BMP-1D fires first, killing off one group of Canadian Airborne, and with a grenade launcher, <laughs> almost butchering the second squad as well. This is not going to go down well. There we go, all of them died. Double group of T-80Us. A couple of Mortar 1A3s with their Milan 1... No, no, sorry, Milan F2s trying to fight back. Milan F2 does 24 AP and these guys are definitely hurting. Now is a good time for the Challenger 2 to fight. One T-80U goes down. The other T-80U moves out of range. I don't really think that the Challenger should be pursuing at this point. That was an HGM that narrowly missed the Challenger. Come on, boys. They are at a plus one, by the way. Challenger 2 again narrowly avoids getting hit. I mean, well, not actively, but the missile just missed. They are at 86 versus 236, so they still have ways to go. At this point, he's fighting Wace and Scabler. So that means that uh, the, uh, I don't know, the Russian player... And swirled. Here's the Russian. Or swirled. Not really sure. And 
Now, it seems like he's more or less regaining terrain that he lost initially. He started giving up terrain just in order to hold on to the terrain, or at least the town that he had. The town is a little easier to defend in the forest. And for the moment, he seems to be in a slightly better position than he was five minutes ago, but that might change with two Modernas on the flank. The Modernas currently don't really have any threat coming for them. All the while, the Modernas, with their main guns and their autocannons, are really good at punishing infantry. That's exactly what you see happening here. Fusilier 90 being engaged by the Modestrelci, as well as the Modernas. A Lynx 3 might change this encounter, though. Slings in a Lynx, or slings in a uh, Hellfire missile. One hit, kills off the Moderna, and the second narrowly misses it because it dodges back into the smokescreen. But that's at least one more super heavy down. We also know that at least one of the T-80Us is down. There's the other one. So the second one has survived. And now it's time for the friendly Martyr 2s to deal some enemy... Uh, or to deal some damage against the enemy infantry. I really like the Martyr 2s. They're just quite expensive. You're paying 30 points. They have 7 frontal armor. I think that even used to be 10 back in the day. 6 AP, really, really accurate. They don't carry that many rounds, though. You got 300 rounds and a rate of fire of 204 rounds a minute. So, if these things actually survive, which does happen because of that 7 frontal armor, then you might need to resupply them with more ammo, just to keep those autocannons going. Now, for the moment, despite those heavy pushes that Red initially did, they are still in control of Alpha. But we have a whole bunch of infantry that definitely needs resupplies. These guys need reinforcements, they need ammo, they need to be in a fighting condition, in case Red tries this again. But the interesting thing is, it's Red's move. Blue is at a plus one, and that's thanks to holding Delta. Once the enemy pushes you out of Delta, especially if you're fighting from this side, it is hard to get back in. Because you have a whole lot of open terrain to go through before you're able to get either here or here. An alternative way would be to try and make another move on Alpha because it's a plus two. Get a CV in here and Red is suddenly sitting in another plus one. But it might take them quite a bit of resources to get in there. And by this point I think they've already lost a lot of resources. So they might not have that much left. Now the Milans are trying to pump HUGMs into the TADU but lose line of sight. That's because they have all sorts of infantry in here, but not anything along the lines of reconnaissance. And I can't blame him, because at the rate at which he was losing infantry, and the ranges at which he was fighting, you don't really need reconnaissance. You just need more infantry, just to keep Red at bay. Now though, the situation is shifted, and now would be a good time to bring in reconnaissance. I'm still expecting the uh, Moderna to be sitting somewhere along this tree line. And it seems like the AS350 is trying to spot it, but is being countered by a lonely group of Granicari, which are trying to shoot down the Hilo. So far doing a little bit of damage, but nothing too severe. That would be the Moderna. Yep, the Moderna is out again. Where's the Lynx? Here's the Lynx. Lynx is pulling back. Potentially to go all the way back here to resupply at the FOB. So for the moment, the Lynx is not going to be an actual option to counter that Moderna. So initially, he's holding off with his AS350. You also saw him bring in a Vickers, and just look at the speed at which these things move across terrain. That's a 100 kilometer range off-road speed. Now to make matters more interesting, Azad surrenders. So this is now a 2 versus 4. This also means that Chunt now inherited all the units on the left line of the or left side of the map. And to make matters worse, this line seems to be getting pushed at the moment. Interestingly, all the infantry is in the tree line, of course in the quad stacks, because why the hell wouldn't you? With the exception of being, oh, I don't know, uh, bombed, shot at by uh, large caliber guns or potentially hit by mortar strikes. So the town is unoccupied. He does have a couple of Abrams, but they're weakened. 
and he now has to spread out his attention between the left flank and the far right. And you can already see that it's taking me quite a bit of effort to scroll from one side to the other. Imagine being able or being in control of these forces and trying to hold on to everything. Now this is not looking good. We have uh, a total of three V-Hors coming down this way against Rifleman 90, but the Rifleman 90 seem to be more interested in, well, dying at the moment and trying to keep the Potter Branchy off of them than going after the tanks because they're simply not in range and they don't have anything out here that can defeat the V-Hor at the ranges which they're at currently. There is one silver lining, and that's that the right flank is currently not being pressured. There's no real threat at the right flank, so I think that at this point he might be diverting his attention over to the left side. And you can see that he's already bringing in his own units. We have Bisons coming in, and a couple more FE-432s, another Challenger 2. And in case you're wondering, how the hell do you get more Challenger 2s? Well, if your allies leave, your own availability goes up. And with that, you can bring in more challengers than you normally would. There is one bit of a problem here, and that's that Red just brought in a command vehicle. And with it, Foxtrot is neutral, meaning that Red again has plus one. Red's also bringing in those units of infantry that we saw earlier quite close. This is both good news and bad. The good news is that for the moment they are outnumbered by the Canadian Airborne and especially all those transports, but the transports are not really fighting. Some of them are just sitting here. But reinforcements are on the way. More Fusiliers dropping off directly in front of the Proletary, but so far immediately going panicked because they've taken a hell of a beating from that uh, Strishen weapon on the Proletary. It's got 2A in the back. Unfortunately, not really doing any damage at the moment, but that's about to change. These guys are just here holding the tree line. But aside from that, not really doing anything too useful. It seems that for the moment, the threat has passed. F-111C comes in and bombs the position that he thinks the enemy command vehicle might be at. If it's a command infantry unit, then I'd say it's a pretty good bet, because it might very well be in this town. He does not have any other spots where he could adequately be hiding that command unit. So, I'd say it's a very good bet that this would be the position where the command unit is. The alternative would be this building, and this was not caught in the blast radius. Now, the right flank is still both pushing up, so very much uh, kudos to Chunt over here for pushing the right flank and trying to hold on to the left flank, because this is not easy. But they're making progress. Fresh meat providing two Leopard 2A1s, as well as a whole bunch of Panzer Grenadiers, again in quad stacks. I'm not sure if this is the new meta or anything. But they're making progress. Challenger 2 to back them up, but it could use a bit of fuel, so if you guys could not blow up these supply trucks and instead capture them and use those to resupply the Challenger, then that would be much appreciated. So far, apparently, there are still enemy units nearby, because the units, the supply trucks, are not being transferred to him yet. Two more T-80Us at the front line, encountering the Leopard 2A1. There goes one of them. Now, you do need, there we go, to take out that Tunguska, otherwise there are going to be a whole bunch of dead Panzer Grenadier here. The Panzer Grenadier keep lobbing adequate, sorry, accurate AT weapons. I suppose, it, just after I said that they blow up and just completely miss their shots. They need two more hits. Uh-oh. Here's a Tunguska. And there's a whole bunch of dead Panzer Grenadiers. Challenger is moving forward, but keep in mind, he's not operating only here, but also here. And this flank is still not quite done. But that's about to be a little different. As an F-111C comes in and just wipes out another threatening area. Back to right. Challenger 2 is ready for a fight. The firing computer on the T-80U has been reset, and if the Challenger can... No, that's the wrong target. He can still capitalize on that for the next half or next half minute. He's firing at something else. I think he might not be able to see it. Going for the Conquerors. No more Conquerors. Brannigan's Panzer Grenadier still holding the front line. 12 seconds left. And there goes the T-80U. Now the enemy, I think, has no further super heavies. 
Fresh meat doesn't have super heavies at the front line either, but four Leopard 2A1s are nothing to snicker at. This is a whole lot of firepower, and it's coming in at exactly the right time, as Scabbler seems to be bringing in more enemy infantry. Trying to get those infantry units over here, while you're being threatened by four Leopard 2A1s, is not easy. And there goes the command vehicle, it's trying to run off. It seems that they not only push the enemy out of that sector, but they're also once again in control of Fox, and now they're at a plus three. So far, they're still 200 points behind. But with a plus three, that situation changes very, very quickly. The enemy seems to be getting desperate. Flies in an MH24 Whiskey, trying to get shots in on the uh, Leopard 2A1s, and they are successful. The Leopard 2A1s were with four, and now they're with two. The Challenger 2 at the moment doesn't have any real threats, with the exception of the Toe 2. And, of course, the helicopter hovering above it. But for the moment, it doesn't really seem that preoccupied. If those RPG-26s, though, carried by the Spatsnaz grew come any closer, that could be a bit of a problem. Hopefully the, the uh, Leos over here can work those guys over before they get any closer. Ooh, there goes your infantry. Come on. That's one Spatsnaz grew less. With these guys being panicked, they're not very accurate anymore. Challenger 2 thinks that retreating at the moment might be the better choice, and I completely agree with him. As, yep, that would be Napalm Artillery comes in. Now, they are at a plus three, and I said that that situation of uh, being 100 points behind changes quickly. This is it. They're already at 255 versus 298. They have 10 minutes left on the game. Left flank, despite still being held mostly by riflemen, seems to be secure. I'm not really detecting any further threats, and he does have a reconnaissance helo overhead, so if the enemy tries anything, they're likely to get detected quickly. Over on the right flank, we still have the Challenger and more infantry, with another Leopard 2A1, as well as a bunch of AA, tracked rapiers, currently going for fighters, but also shooting down an enemy bomber. So the skies currently should be clear, and if they can... Oh, hold on. Red just got Charlie back. Now they don't have too many positions where they could be hiding a command vehicle. It could be over here, but it would likely already be in conflict with the Panzer Grenadiers. And no, it's definitely not in here, because three HGMs just fired from that building. And once again, it's neutral. So I think that that guy might be relocating a CV. Now this is going to be the Battle of the Bombers. Avia 2, uh, um, what's that again, a 28 comes in. This thing drops one 1,500 kilogram bomb. This thing drops four 1,000 kilogram bombs. 20 HE, 24 HE. This is going to hurt <laughs> a lot. Mutually, I might add. Unfortunately, F-111C goes down. There's the bombs, and there is the other projectile. Neutralizing what was left of the Panzer Grenadiers in this building. Plus three, and 299 versus 298. At this point, the battle is decided. Or at least... It could be, because they still have eight minutes left. But in order to actually counter it, they're gonna have to make a push here and there. They're gonna have to get Charlie back. Now they are making a move with quite a few units, which seem to be transports over here. And there is a smoke wall. I don't think he has any mortars. He, I mean Chunt. So that means that this smoke wall is not friendly. OT-64 is coming in, looking to capture the town. If they can bring another command vehicle in here, it is going to be obvious where they placed it. But the question is whether he can take it out very quickly. He does, of course, and I haven't actually covered these at all, have the big guns, the M110s. Or well had, because they're just being countered. These guys don't fire very fast, but if they do fire and hit, it's 10 HE. They can wipe out an infantry squad with one hit. I thought we'd had it with the super heavies, but two more Modernas are making a move towards this sector over here in Foxtrot. They're about to get a warm welcome, though, from both the Canadian Airborns and, if they get any closer, the Fusilier 90. It seems, though, that they're not too eager to fight. 
And they still haven't actually... Hold on, what's this? We might have a helicopter flanking force over here, but I haven't actually seen a spotter for them. Lynx 3 trying to do damage against them with whatever stingers it had left. Gamma is not really <laughs> impressed with that. Fire back with an Igla 1, immediately neutralizing the Lynx. The only thing that stands between them here is one Wolverine. Um, it could kill them. But it's questionable if he gets enough shots off. There's one. He's too deep inside the tree line to get a good line of sight. The Martyr VTS don't have any defenses. The 113s with their machine gun might be able to do some damage. That is one more Gamma. They almost found... No, they actually found the command vehicle. Wolverine fires again, killing off one more Gamma. And the last one does not have a spotter. So while they sort of know where the CV is, they don't really know how to kill it. Apparently he already took out another Moderna. And the other infantry seems to be coming at them. But at this point, it is too late. They've even captured Charlie, putting them at a plus five. And that's really bringing in the points quickly. Keep in mind, this was a 2v4 for the last 15 to 20 minutes. 2v4. And Chunt and Fresh Meat brought it home together. Well done, guys. That was a really hard-fought fight. 6.2 thousand points in kills, 4.7 in losses. Um, I'm going to contribute some of those losses to um, Azad. Because Azad shipped him a whole bunch of riflemen 90, which were in quad stacks, and he got them just as Red was attacking his sector. So there was not a whole lot that Chunt could have done very differently in order to survive with those guys. Fresh meat, 5.3, 3.8. Good kill to death ratio. Um, he provided a lot of the fighting forces over on Red, or on the, the right flank and in the middle. Now, I'm surprised that these guys lost as many forces as they did. Um, Weiss and I think Scabler were the one providing all the attacking force far right, where Chunt was initially defending himself in those three lines and in the towns. You can see that they lost quite a few forces over here, although Scabler not as much as I would have expected. Anyway, I thought that was a very, very good game. Chunt, thank you very much for sending it in. I really liked shooting this one. And let me know what your thoughts are down below it on the uh, comment section. Did you like the battle? What did you think particularly good about it? What did you not like about it? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you have any good replays of your own, then by all means send them in through the link down below in the description. And of course, if you like watching my content and you want to uh, see more, you want to support my channel, then please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Link to that as well in the description down below. Anything that you can uh, donate really helps me to keep the channel going. And with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more videos.